Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Ukraine. Yes, this is the very first time ever since the war broke out with Russia that PM Modi is heading to Kyiv. Since the war commenced in February 2022, India has come under criticism from Western countries in particular for its stance. India has called for the cessation of hostilities and a peaceful resolution, but in doing so, it has also maintained ties with Russia and Ukraine both. The Prime Minister, in fact, met Russian President Vladimir Putin this year in July in Moscow when Kremlin had rolled out the red carpet. In fact, and now with this visit to Kyiv, Prime Minister Modi is perhaps one of the very few leaders in the world who can confidently visit both Moscow and Kyiv. India has been pressing for a peaceful resolution via dialogue ever since the escalation of tensions in the region. Previously, our External Affairs Minister, Dr. S. J. Shankar, has also emphasized that the Prime Minister intervened to get the fighting in Ukraine stopped thrice in order to facilitate the movement of stranded engines out of the conflict zone. PM Modi has also made uh, major statements on the war itself, uh, highlighting that the solution is not on the battlefield but via engaging in dialogue. He has pledged that uh, both sides must maintain peace and that India will do whatever in its power in order to contribute to doing so. In September 2022, Prime Minister Modi told President Putin that uh, he should not be waging a war in Ukraine and uh, today's era is not that of a war. Additionally, he is also after that emphasized that India is not a neutral spectator in the conflict but in fact is on the side of peace. He reiterated his call for a resolution with regards to the dispute, uh, emphasizing on dialogue. Uh, but this, of course, has drawn the ire, especially of the Americans that, uh, who did criticize uh, Prime Minister Modi's visit to Russia in July this year, uh, stating that India should, uh, India's stance is uh, not that of a neutrality, in fact. But Prime Minister Modi, of course, mentioned that peace is of utmost importance and the solution to the war in Ukraine cannot be found on the battlefield. What is interesting is that prior to the meeting um, in Moscow with the President Putin, Prime Minister Modi had also met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Italy itself. Uh, in June. Um, now, since then, uh, of course, Zelensky had extended a formal invitation, one uh, that Prime Minister Modi has accepted today. Uh, he will be in Kyiv and this uh, is a very interesting visit because tomorrow is the, the Ukrainian National Day, emphasizing upon uh, the significance of this visit. With us on the broadcast this morning is Professor Madhav Nalapath, Editorial Director of the Sunday Guardian. Good morning, sir, and thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast as I mentioned earlier, Prime Minister Modi is uh, one of the few leaders uh, who can visit both Moscow as well as Kyiv. Uh, now, do you think this is testament to India's role in the world as a Vishwabandhu? Well, look, uh, Prime Minister Modi has always stood for peace. In 2022, uh, you remember, he was very clear to President Putin himself that this is the era of peace. And he is a man who believes sincerely in the value of peace. So quite clearly, he would have liked this war to end in 2022. And had it done so, I think uh, a lot of lives could have been saved. Many Ukrainian lives have been lost. Much Ukrainian territory has been uh, lost as a consequence of the war raging on. And even more is likely to be lost. More lives, more territory. So I think the sooner this war is ended and an armistice declared, the better. And that, I think, is what Prime Minister Modi is looking at. I'd like to say that you know, this is not a question of being pro-Putin or pro-West. It's a question of being pro-peace. And whether it is Putin or the West, we should all be pro-peace. So that is the Prime Minister's message. Please, this is the era of peace not a war. In 2022, he said that to President Putin. Now he's going to repeat that to President Zelensky. And in my personal view, 
I think the sooner there's an armistice, the better it will be for Ukraine, because Ukraine is all, already suffering terribly, and that suffering can only start being reversed once the conflict ends, once the fighting ends. And that is precisely what an armistice is designed to do. Indeed, sir. And you've mentioned how Ukraine is uh, suffering terribly. Lives are being lost on both sides. Both uh, the Ukrainian people and the Russian people are now bearing uh, the brunt of this uh, prolonged war. Uh, but we've seen a surge in the fighting in the recent days, particularly in uh, the Kursk region where Ukraine is uh, currently, of course, uh, pressing an offensive. Um, in fact, the United States of America has just cleared a 125 million uh, tranche as well to Ukraine as far as uh, their uh, military aid is concerned. Uh, this has taken the total uh, to 55.7 billion US dollars in aid. U the US continues to finance this as well and back Ukraine. So amidst all of this, do you think the Prime Minister's message will resonate with the Ukrainian leadership? Look. I don't know about the leadership, but certainly the Ukrainian people are fed up of this war. And as far as the Biden administration is concerned, it is Biden and then uh, Prime Minister Johnson of the United Kingdom who really pushed this war uh, onto, uh, onto Europe and who made it a full-scale assault uh, on Russia using Ukraine as a battering ram. And frankly, the Ukrainians have paid a heavy cost. The uh, Americans have paid a very heavy cost, so have the Europeans. And the, the European population is getting fed up. The American public is getting fed up. And frankly, one of the reasons why Joe Biden became as unpopular as he is, is because of the fact that he prefers money to go to Ukraine rather than to the deserving people in the U.S., of which there are tens, literally tens of millions of, uh, of people who are totally uh, deprived were in deep poverty, and that $50, $60 billion could have rescued them from poverty, could have given them decent lives, a decent chance of life. So Biden preferred war in Ukraine to a decent life for millions and tens of millions of underprivileged U.S. citizens, which is why he's unpopular. Frankly, this war is becoming more and more uh, unpopular in Ukraine. My assessment is the Ukrainian people want an end to this war, but somehow the leadership is just clinging on to this fiction that it can somehow overcome Russia. You look at the map, you look at Ukraine, and you look at the difference between the two. I don't see how anyone in the Pentagon or the White House could have looked at that map and come to the conclusion that Ukraine can prevail in this conflict. Why are they giving false hopes? Why are some people in the British uh, establishment giving false hopes? I don't understand. One look at the reality on, on the ground, one look at the territorial uh, uh, reach, one look at the weapons available, and frankly, the Russians have got some very deadly weapons, and after a point, they may just feel provoked enough to use it. And then we are going to enter into a full-scale global crisis. I don't know why Biden is doing this. I don't know why some of his friends across the Atlantic are still doing this. In my opinion, and I'm talking as someone who's a, who's a friend of the West and who wants India and the West to come together to resist expansionism in the Indo-Pacific, this is completely hostile to the interests of the U.S. people, of the European people. And I think the people understand that. And it's time the leaders do. So I'd like to say Prime Minister Modi's message, I don't know how popular it is among the leadership. It is very, very popular among people. And increasingly, not just people in Ukraine, but people in Europe and people in the United States. So one last question. You've referred to the fact that the full-scale assault is taking place on the European turf, even as America continues uh, to finance Ukraine. Uh, we've seen a peace summit take place earlier in Switzerland in June itself, but that had unfortunately ended in a stalemate. Notably, uh, Russia was absent from the deliberations and the discussions that had taken place. India, of course, uh, did not sign the joint communique that had uh, been presented 
presented by uh, all the countries that had been gathered over there. Um, so what do you think the primary problem is? Do you think it is the larger uh, security architecture of uh, um, the NATO that is there, um, especially since uh, Ukraine did I uh, becoming a member of NATO and Russia felt that that was perhaps a threat uh, right across its border? Well, look, I'd like to say that NATO has been singularly unsuccessful in Asia. And it is why? Because of its obsession with Europe and with fighting wars in Europe. And if you look at Asia, wherever NATO has gone, whether it's Libya, whether it's Syria, whether it's Iraq, whether it's Afghanistan, it's been a total flop. It has failed miserably. And NATO needs to reconfigure itself and face the new reality of Cold War 2.0, where it's no longer Russia. It's uh, another uh, superpower that has suddenly come up. That is the issue. And NATO is not willing to do that. They're too comfortable with being Europeanist. They're too comfortable with this Europe-focused mentality and with the Europe-focused tactics. They feel it's very difficult to change, and they're not even trying to change. So the problem, frankly, is that NATO just refuses to admit that we are in a new era. And the sooner it does so, the better it will be for overall security architecture of democracies. So I'd only like to say once again, Prime Minister Modi made a clear categorical statement in 2022. At that point in time, the Russians were silent, but the Ukrainians were very clear they'll push on. Today, he is going to make the same pitch in 2024, two years down the line. And I wish President Zelensky looks at what has happened in these two years and reaches the correct conclusion it is this is an unwinnable war for Ukraine from the start. The sooner he cuts his losses and, he, and has an armistice, the better it will be for his people. You know, this is a, something which, frankly, all of us who care for humanity, all of us who are terribly upset at human lives being lost, including now we are seeing human lives getting lost in, uh, in the Middle East. I think this is something that we are very passionate about, that we agree with Prime Minister Modi that there should be peace and peace now. I don't know if Zelensky will agree, frankly, but if he does not, I think essentially what he's doing is acting, you know, when, when you fish, you put a bait on a hook, an earthworm or something. Zelensky should not allow Ukraine to be that earthworm. And for one thing, this is not a small fish. The hook is meant to catch a small fish. Russia is a huge shark. And, uh, and that hook, little hook is going to be useless against Russia. So the sooner the United States recognizes it, the sooner the rest of NATO recognizes it, and Ukraine recognizes it, the better. Prime Minister Modi was right in 2022. He's doubly right in 2024. It remains to be seen whether his sage advice will be taken this time around. All right, sir. With that, I would like to thank you for, of course, taking our time and uh, speaking to us this morning, sharing your insight uh, into what is going on as far as uh, the war in Ukraine is concerned and what are the implications of the Prime Minister's visit, whether uh, his message will, of course, resonate with Zelensky or not. But, of course, what's also interesting is that uh, the U.S. elections are on the anvil, viewers. Um, we all know there is a tough battle between the Democrats and the Republicans. Come Harris and Donald Trump at the moment uh, so uh, and the elections of course will conclude in November of course uh, what remains to be seen is whether a change in uh, if a change does take place whether a change in the US leadership uh, would also impact this war or not but uh, in the meantime let's also listen in to Prime Minister Modi's uh, most recent remark on the war uh, he's of course departed from Poland he's on his way to Kiev via a very special train known as the rail force one uh, so let's also take a look at his comments as he was leaving january 2025 poland european union ki ki friend 
यूक्रेन और पश्चिम एशिया में चल रहे संघर्ष हम सभी के लिए गहरी चिंता का विषय है भारत का यह दृढ़ विश्वास है कि किसी भी समस्या का समाधान रणभूमि में नहीं हो सकता किसी भी संकट में मासूम लोगों की जान की हानि पूरी मानवता के लिए सबसे बड़ी चुनौती बन गई है हम शांति और स्थिरता की जल्द से जल्द बहाली के लिए डायलॉग और डिप्लोमेसी का समर्थन करते हैं इसके लिए भारत अपने मित्र देशों के साथ मिलकर हर संभव सहयोग देने के लिए तैयार है फ्रेंड्स पोलैंड में इंडोलॉजी और संस्कृत का बहुत पुराना और समृद्ध ट्रेडिशन रहा है फॉर मोर सच वीडियो सब्सक्राइब टू द न्यूज एक्स यूट्यूब चैनल हिट द बेल आइकन